Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is my hope and prayer that this video is going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I'm fine and the weather in Kisumu is also fantastic. The Supreme Court today framed nine issues which they will consider in determining the fate of William Samoya Raputo and Raila Amolo Odinga. In this video, I want us to look into those particular nine issues and several other determinations were also made today. One of them is that Raila Amolo Odinga will be allowed access to the servers and there are some 15 ballot boxes which will be open and maybe I'll need to do a, a video why those specific 15, uh, 15 uh, ballot boxes. But let us now look at these issues, the nine issues which the Supreme Court will be using to determine whether to throw away the petition or to nullify the election of William Samoy Arapruto. I want us to be a bit brief today. Let me just get those particular issues. We deal with them one by one. I'm just trying to get them from my, my phone here. The, 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 the nine issues. I want to try and explain those specific nine issues. Sorry. Those specific nine issues. Okay. Now, the first issue which they will consider is that whether the technology deployed by IBC for the conduct of 2022 general election met the standards of integrity, verifiability, security, and transparency to guarantee accurate and verifiable results. For me, that is huge and it is heavy. And someone probably, someone sent me a message on uh, my WhatsApp today, and this is what the guy is saying. Several IBC and Kenya Kwanza Alliance ICT officers are now not concerned about the nullification of elections, but are worried about the transnational digital trail and uh, espionage crimes that will lead to Attorney General seeking orders at Supreme Court to prefer high treason charges against people and the Republic of Kenya. These officers are throwing their laptops and phones inside Nairobi River. What they forgot is Safaricom was sole internet provider and government had 35% shares. Government will obtain information movement from Venezuela to Kenya. <laughs> That's interesting. But for me, the first issue, if you want to understand the first issue, then you need to understand what do they really want. They are talking of whether the technology deployed by IEBC for the conduct of the 2022 election met the standards of integrity, verifiability, security, and transparency. So if it was Kemskit and it was used, what were the standards? Can it be confirmed that indeed whatever was transmitted from that kit is what was relayed up there? And in my view, I think IBC was responding. In my view, I could be wrong, but I think IBC was responding to to another petition which was filed by Youth Advocacy for Africa. The Youth Advocacy for Af Africa, the Supreme Court has granted them several other orders. One of the orders which the Supreme Court has, has uh, given them is that the IBC to provide them with copies of technology security policy compressing but not limited to password policy, password matrix, owner, owners of the system administra administration password, systems user, level of access, the workflow, charts for identification, telling, transmission, posting of, of portals, and any other API that had been integrated. So basically, I tend to think that the one of the petitions which people must look at very closely is the one for, for by Youth Advocacy for Africa. And the uh, IBC has also given them, number two, that the IBC to give them 
give your supervised access to server at the tallying center for storing and transmitting the voting. So they want access to the server, server which they've been granted and the IBC to provide with certified copies of penetration test because normally if, the, if uh, a test has to be always done and reports given. So they want to check all those and they are, they, they, are, they are also supposed to be provided with the IBC directed to avail partnership agreements with its technical partners, list of users, trails, admins, access to provide clarity on IBC systems and their uses for review and verification. So I tend to think that the first order will deal with the issue of technology. So that's the first order. The second order, they're saying whether there was interference with uploading and transmission of Form 34A from the polling station to the IEBC portal. I want to repeat that number two. Whether there was interference with uploading of uploading and transmission of Form 34A from polling station to IEBC public portal. Remember, IBC has been ordered, I mean, the course has ordered recount in uh, of 15 ballot papers. Why do you think they've ordered that? For me, to address the second, the second uh, issue. They want to check whether there was interference. So they, they'll, they'll go open those ballot boxes, papers. They'll count them. Then they'll confirm, of course, these were the ballot papers. Are they telling with what was relayed? So if in those ballot papers, I mean ballot boxes, the, the information which is in the portal is different from them. What is in those boxes? Because they'll do physical count. Then I think people will be in trouble. People are going to be in trouble. And they have 48 hours to do that. 48 hours to do that. So I've seen Denis Itumbi sharing some of the forms and Kenyans can easily point out <coughs> the glaring mistakes in those forms. So that's number two. Number three, the, second, the third issue, which the Supreme Court will be looking at, is whether there was a difference between Form 34A uploaded on IEBC public portal and the Form 34A received at the National Tallying Center and Form 34A issued to agents at the polling centers. You know, all agents were issued with the forms. And in case Azimio had agents, they'll be lucky. But if they didn't have agents, <clears throat> Azimio are going to be in trouble. But UDA will be in more trouble on this. Because they're saying they want to confirm whether the form which was uploaded on the IBC portal and the forms received at the telling center and the ones which were issued to agents. Now, after count, after vote count, what normally happens is that you fill that form 34A, several copies. Each party agents are given a form. Once a party agent is given a form, the next stage normally <laughs> is that they're transmitted and the returning or the presiding officer carries that form to the constituency telling center. So if someone uploaded a form which is different from what party agents have, then the next question, which form will the IBC, I mean, will the Supreme Court base their judgment on? If a Zimio form is different from the one at the portal, and the one at the portal is similar to the ones Kenya Kwanzaa has, which one will they use? Maybe they, they, there is where, that's when now they'll go back and <clears throat> do security checks. Which form is authentic and which one is not authentic? The fourth issue which they are going to ask is whether the postponement of gubernatorial elections in Kakamega and Mombasa County, parliamentary elections in Kitui Rural, Kacheliba, Rongai and Pokot South constituencies and electoral wards in Nyaki West, in North Imenti constituency and Kwanjenga in Embakasi constituency resulted in voter suppression to determine to the detriment of the petitioner, pe petitioners in petition number five. Now, that is the big question because there's strong feeling. In fact, the moment the, 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 the courts, I mean, the moment IBC postponed those elections, 
I think I was the first person to do a comprehensive analysis why I thought, and rightly so, that it was a strategy to narrow, to narrow Odinga uh, votes. You saw the way the votes in those regions turned out, and it's kind of a by-election. I'm certain that there were a huge number of people who failed to turn up because their candidates were not there. If they had turned up, probably the figures would have increased. So let us wait and see how that is going to be determined. But now the, the three elections, which are, I mean the, the five, are they six, which are postponed, are now going to find their way at the Supreme Court. The fifth issue is whether there were unexplained discrepancies between the votes cast for presidential candidates and other elective positions. And this is also very interesting. You go to a polling station, you are given the six ballot papers. Then you decide, for me, I'm only going to vote for the governor and not the rest. Where are the rest of the ballot papers? This one will be based at the polling station. Where are the rest of the ballot papers? IBC were asked this question in the last petition. They could not answer. I think this time around, because the Supreme Court is making it an issue, someone will have to explain. There are so many, so many discrepancies, especially on the figures of uh, the president, the governor, the senator, and the women rep. What is causing that discrepancies? Could that inform the rejected votes? That's something which the Supreme Court will decide. The sixth is issue which they will decide is whether the IBC carried out the verification, telling and declaration of results in accordance with Article 138.3c and 138.10 of the Constitution. It is expected that results should be verified. Once they are verified, they should be tallied. Once tallied, a declaration. You all know that Ofula Chebukati announced the results before some 27 constituency, constituencies were, were tallied. Why was that allowed to happen? They've given the excuse that they did that because there were several issues. There were commotion, the Wafula Chebukati was blocked, but they had com completed the verification. IBC is also arguing that the commissioners who are raising this issue, the four rebel commissioners who are raising the issue, actually read some verified results. So let us wait and see how the courts are going to deal with that matter. The, sec the, the seventh issue they're saying is whether the declared president-elect attained 50% plus one vote of all the votes cast in accordance with the, with the Article 138A, 138.4 of the Constitution. I mean, this one, in my view, I think has to do with Okeya Omtata's petition. Okeya Omtata's petition is the one which is dealing specifically with these maths. With these maths. Because if you calculated the maths, it was 100.001%. Cherera is giving his figure. Other Kenyans are giving his figures. Did the votes which Ruto got reach the threshold? Because there's the figures which IBC gave the turnout which they gave, and the figures which they released later. And by the time Mofula Chebukati was stating that, he projected that the figures were actually going to rise. The eighth issue is whether there were irregularities and illegalities of such magnitude as to affect the final results of the presidential elections. You know, you, normally there could be one issue here, one issue there, but it can't really impact on the outcome of the election. So they are, they are going to determine whether those issues you are, you are raising, some, some forms being uploaded without figures, you know, all those issues, whether those, those issues have such a magnitude as to affect. If they won't affect, Ruta will be declared. If they will, 
Roto will not be declared. And number nine, what reliefs and, and orders can the court grant or issue? Now, that is now their verdict. Their verdict. What will they, which, what reliefs and what order can the courts grant? I don't know what you think. But for me, this Supreme Court case is going to be interesting. And it's going to shape the future of Kenyan politics. If people will be found to have been uh, part of a rigging scheme, I can assure you those guys will be in jail. If elections were rigged, the, the results will be nullified. The question which Ken Kenyans should begin asking themselves is what next? Are we going to go for a rerun or a fresh election? Because for a fresh election, it means the entire IBC is going to be to be disbanded already at the supreme court the judges have declined to make a ruling on which side should represent ibc charera team has their their lawyer the other side also has their lawyer so we have two lawyers representing ibc so tomorrow we will be waiting to hear which law firm will have the opportunity to speak on behalf of ibc ibc decisions are made by majority Majority commissioners are on this other side. And I, I, I listened to Ngatia. I was like the, 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 the person mandated to appoint law firms to represent IBC. are not the commissioners, but the secretariat. And because, Gidu Mugai, sorry. And because of that, they, <coughs> they have appointed Gidu Mugai to represent the IBC. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. I think next we are going to deal into with this particular issue of... Um, of uh, the issue of uh, 15 polling stations, the real meat in it. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.